Okay, our twelfth factor is the heavy bone threshold. This is probably the most misunderstood of all the factors. People just see heavy bone threshold. They see 650 grains. That's all they see. They don't read the stuff in between, and they don't understand what it means. A lot of people think this tells you that if you've got an error that weighs 650 grains, it'll always go through the heavy bone. Not true. All it means when we did our testing with different kinds of broadheads is that every style of broadhead test showed an increased frequency of penetrating a heavy bone when the error mass is up around 650 grains or more. And it's very, very close to that, that 650. So if you err, probably better to err a few grains on the upside than the downside, somewhat depending on your, your broadhead. So if we took a broadhead that's a poor bone performer, and there's a lot of them out there. They might penetrate a heavy bone seven, eight, ten percent of the time. You get up to that heavy bone threshold weight of the air, and that might jump up to 18 percent. Well, this is a big game. It's a big improvement. You've made your setup better, but it's not the best you can do. If you look at those other factors back there, that high mechanical advantage, that single bevel that helps pop the, the bone open, uh, the thin edges on it, tapered shafts, you plug all this stuff together, and if you put this on a sub 650 grain era, you're going to get through heavy bone 60, 65, maybe 70% of the time. Well, you go above 650, and in the testing, this is hundreds of shots, we had a 100% frequency of penetrating the heavy bone. Now, the theory, and it's all we can call it now, is theory, is that the error has to push on the bone long enough to overcome all of the body's defensive mechanism. Your skeleton isn't there just to hold you up and give muscles a place to attach. They're designed to protect the body. They curve multiple directions. They have attachments that let them move. They have flexion. So this arrow, when it hits, has got to impact that bone. It's got to move that bone through whatever attachment give there is. Then it's got to sink into the bone itself and somehow get through that bone in order to penetrate it. That's where your single bevel comes in popping it too. But it's got to push long enough to overcome all of those forces. The flexion of the bone, the flexion caused by the attachment, and sometimes it has to overcome the curve of the bone. There we go back to tip design makes a difference if you're hitting a curved rib. So a lot of things will come into play on the heavy bone threshold. But do not get the idea that 650 grains, regardless of what else you're going to do, is going to guarantee you're going to get through a heavy bone. No, 1,000 grains won't do it. If the other things aren't right, it still won't do it. You've got to have everything together. All of the factors make a package. You've got to put that package together. But when you put it together right, somewhere around 650 grains, you're going to have an error that penetrates heavy bone with 100% frequency. And there's been a lot of discussion through the years about the 3 to 1 broadhead. And I like 3 to 1 because it gives you a higher mechanical advantage. To me, that's better. The higher, the better it's going to do. But in our testing, the actual cutoff point we found was a mechanical advantage of 2.6. Now, I'll tell you right now, there are no multi-blade heads that reach 2.6.
So you're still looking at a single blade head to be able to breach the bone with 100% frequency. Now, when we're hitting bone two, something I'd, that does come up is that four blades heads penetrate bone better than three blade. And two blade, of course, penetrates by far the best. When you get into soft tissue, then it's the two blade, the three blade penetrates next best, and four blade. But if you're looking to have a bone breaking error, you're pretty much limited to a quality single blade head. 